Hey folks, this is going to be a really quick Vim plugin highlight video about a plugin called UltiSnips. Um, and this is a snippet plugin. Basically, the idea is that you have a bunch of snippets defined for your programming language of choice. And as you're coding, the things that you find yourself repeating often are automatically completed using the snippet itself. Now, we're going to be using UltiSnips, um, which is our snippet plugin, and there is another plugin called uh, Vim-Snippets that has a bunch of different predefined snippets for a bunch of different programming languages. And we'll take a look at how, how these show up. So we can start by adding both of these plugins to our uh, VimRC file, and then we'll have three configurations here. Um, the first is when we go to edit our snippets, we want it to be in a vertically split window. window and we have a bunch of, um, in our snippets, there's going to be different um, points where we can jump to, and we'll be going forward and backwards uh, on those using Control-B and Control-Z, and these are the default. So let's take a look at how this works. Um, because we have because we have installed the Honza slash Vim dash snippets, we have some snippets available to, for us by default. So in I'm in a C++ file, and one of the common things that people do is use includes, right? So um, if I type INCC and then hit tab, it auto-completes um, from a snippet. And so by default, if you have a, an auto-completion plugin like COC involved, it will actually show you a bunch of the options for the snippets that you have available as you type your characters. Um, I wanted to show it, I'll show that at the end of the video, um, but for now, um, if I hit tab, it auto-completes. If I type in, there's nothing here, right? So there's a bunch of other ones. There's one for for each. Um, I think I can do for e. Yeah, so for e, for a for each thing, for i, it's very common to do a loop for an X amount of uh, iterations, and that's pretty common. So these are some of the common plugins that for C++ that are included in this. And you can click into this and go into your the snippets folder and take a look at the relevant plugins for your language of choice. Like um, for Java, you can see there's a bunch of snippets here around some of the common Java stuff. Anyways, back to UltiSnips. The real benefit here is that we can define our own custom snippets because everyone's coding slightly different. The stuff that you're working on is slightly different. So, so all we have to do is type UltiSnips edit and it will open up a file called cpp.snippets and this will be based off of the file type for my current file. So right now I'm in a C++ file, so it'll create a cpp.snippets file. And um, you can use snippets across file types. Um, you'll have to configure that. So if you just autocomplete ultisnips, you can see that I can add other file types for this um, for this file type itself. So um, that's uh, that's useful as well. Anyways. So um, we can add a snippet by just typing snippet, and then we specify a keyword here. So I'm just going to type in, let's say, blah. And we provide a description. Uh, we don't really care. Um, but some auto-completion plugins will show that description while you're looking at, while you're typing in the keyword. Um, and then we'll type in B, which, which is the option for the snippet. And we'll get back to the option later. Um, and then you type in your snippet here. So uh, in my case, I'm going to type Let's say I'm just creating a class blah, and maybe it's public, and there's a constructor with a default constructor, and that's basically it. So I can end the snippet, and as soon as I save the file, this is available to me. Um, so if I type in blah here, press tab, and you can see that it auto-completes. So that's the basic form of snippet. Um, and then, so the next thing you want to do is you want to figure out where you want to drop your cursor in. So let's say I want to drop my cursor in after this constructor here. So I can just do $1 sign. And so this will be the first location that my cursor is dropped after I um, paste the snippet. So trigger the snippet completion. So in I will do blah again, press tab, and you'll notice that my cursor right now is where the $1 sign is. And I can obviously actually specify some placeholder text here. So I just do like put stuff here. And this is oftentimes useful when you have a bunch of different snippets and you want to figure out, like, you can give hints about what to put stuff in where. So if I hit blah again, so, and then as soon as I start typing, it is also already selected and it will be replaced. You'll notice that it's a dollar one, so that probably means that anything you type here actually can be reused. So when you're creating a class, you usually want to specify the class name. So let's say I do 
$1 on the class name. Now, I can also do $1 down here, and I just have to type in the class name once, and it'll be used in both places. So, let's see how this works. So, if I do blah, and my cursor right now is in the $1 sign, so I can just do class blah, and you'll, you'll notice that it actually auto-completed and typed in for the class constructor as well. So that is useful. So what you can do is, let's say the constructor might have some arguments and we're gonna say um, for two, let's put some args here, right? And let's call this like, just so it's easier to remember, this is the class name. And so we'll specify some arguments and this will be a constructor and for, then we'll just drop us after the constructor. And okay, so now if I do blah, hit enter, I'll specify class name, it's going to be blah. I'll hit control B and it'll jump me to the next num dollar two sign here. So the second part of it, and I'll say, let's say int x. And I'll hit control B again, that'll jump me forward and I can hit control Z to go back, B to go forward. And I can just re-edit this class name and it'll still edit it in both places. So that is super useful. Now let's get back to the option trigger. So B tr only triggers if the keyword is the first thing at the start of a line. There's also other options like I to trigger it inline and A, capital A, which actually triggers it automatically. Um, let's see how those work. So I'm going to create another snippet and this time I want to, let's say, um, maybe just Q, right? So I want to enclose something in quotes, right? So I know there's other plugins that make this a lot easier, but this is just for a demonstration. So quotes around stuff. And this time I'm going to do I, and all I'm going to do is dollar sign quote and end quote and snip it. Right, so here I'm just going to, I'm doing maybe std cout, and I'm going to do Q tab, and you can see that it encloses it in quotes. So that's useful. It might be a common thing to just std out something, and maybe I want to put a slash n at the end of it, and actually. Yeah, so if I just want to std out something now, I don't even have to type in the whole thing. I can just do q something and hello world. And that's pretty useful, especially when you're debugging stuff around. Um, now let's take a look at the autocompleted a, so snippet. And now you want to use a larger keyword or an unusual keyword for like autocompleted snippets. So when I'm including files, I, I doubt I'm going to be using incc at any point in time. So I can just do it for the include, and this time I'm just going to do hashtag include, um, and I want to drop myself down here and dot h, and that's enough. Let's see how this works. So I in cc, and you can see that it auto completed. Actually, I, I hit tab after it because I didn't expect it. Um, so I in cc, and then type in something, and you can see that it also overrides the default I in cc snippet that was provided by the Vim snippets plugin. So that is mode. Um, you can take a look at help um, multi snips, and you can take a look at the options. Um, and there's a bunch of other options: beginning of line, inward, word boundary, regular expressions, and all other cool stuff. So uh, I suggest you guys read through the multi snips help file. And now, one final thing I wanted to show you guys was how multi snips behaves with COC. And you can check out my COC setup with C++ um, video in my channel. Um, but I'll be using that. Okay, so this time I have COC active, so if I type in blah, you can see it tries to autocomplete stuff, and you can see it actually also shows the snippet with a, inside a bracket S, so if I hit tab, it will autocomplete it. And so if I want to use blah, you can see that I can select it and it will show me the description as well. Um, so let's take a look at the edit file, right? So for Q, right, so if I type Q, I can see quotes around stuff and I can see what the snippet is. And there, you can see that there's also default um, Q, DQ snippets that are provided by the Vim snippets plugin. And that's basically all there is to snippets. Um, they're a pretty simple concept. Um, you'll find them useful for a bunch of different stuff. I mostly use them for, especially for new header files, you have to set up a bunch of stuff. Uh, I have to set up namespaces and stuff for my uh, for my libraries and stuff that I'm developing in. I have to set up like maybe um, like pragma once on top of every single header file and stuff like that. So um, I hope you guys find this useful. Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe.